All right, welcome to Bringing the Power. My name is Stefano, I will be your host today. I am very pleased to have our viewers logged in and watching. Um, my name is Stefano, I will be your host today for the panel and I would like to begin by gratefully acknowledging that Science World is located on the traditional and unceded Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh village site of Sanak. And I'd like to start today with a quick introduction from our amazing group of mentors, followed by a hosted discussion. I will help you with that. If you have any questions for the mentors, please feel free to put them in the chat at any time, and I will communicate those to our mentors. I will also be your technician, so if you have any tech issues, I can happily assist. But I do keep ask, and I do ask that we keep our comments in the chat and questions respectful and relevant to the topics being discussed. Now, it is time to meet our mentors. Let's start by going around and doing a brief introduction before we jump into the questions. Mentors, turn on your cameras and I'm bringing you up onto the screen. Welcome. We've got Natalia, Amara, and Sarah. Let's say hello to them. Hello. Thanks hello. for joining us. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. Um, where are you all joining us from, uh, Natalia? I'm in New Westminster today. Right on, Amara? I'm in North Vancouver. And Sarah? I'm in Vancouver. I can see Science World on my window. Amazing. I, I'd wave at you, but I have no, no windows <laughs> in the room that I'm in. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'd like to take a minute to quickly introduce you all. And if any of our viewers would like to say where they're joining us from, they can put that in the chat, of course. And uh, we'd love to hear that, too. Maybe they're in a similar place that we are today. So we're all in the same room right now. So here we are. Natalia? Um, you are an engineer. I feel like we have three engineers in the room, uh, myself definitely not included. And I'd love to hear more about what you do and uh, how that big word engineer attaches itself to what you do. Sounds good. Thanks, Stefano, for the question. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I work as a senior distribution engineer at BC Hydro. And so what my job is, is to deliver the electricity from our, you know, they go from the power plants through transmission system into distribution systems. So I'm working on that last piece of the big power system to deliver power to the customers, to everybody who lives in BC. And that's so right I, now. That's right, exactly. That's very cool. Amara, how about you? How does that big word engineer attach itself to what you do? Sure, thanks, Stefano. Um, so I'm a mechanical engineer, um, and I work for a company called FLIR that does engineering consulting. Um, so other companies hire us to help them um, complete projects that they want done. And particularly, we work in the mining industry. Um, so we help these other companies to design new mines if they want to mine copper or other metals that are used in our everyday lives. That's what we help them do. And as a mechanical engineer, I work on designing some of the equipment that they will eventually use at these mine sites. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome, exciting, very different also from uh, Natalia's. Sarah, I'm gonna guess you have a completely different thing that you do and uh, use the title engineer in a different way completely. Let me hear about it. Absolutely, I actually have things in common with Natalia because we both work for BC Hydro, but where Natalia works on getting the electricity from its very last point down to the customer, I work on the opposite end. So I'm working in the power plants and what my job is most of the time is working on big changes or new power plants. So I am an electrical engineer, but I work more as a project engineer, which means taking all of the different pieces of design that other people have done to contribute to great big projects and pulling them together into something that works. Very cool. I do have a question. I've heard that engineers all get the certification when they finish their engineering uh, education and in the form of a ring on their finger. Is everybody wearing their engineering ring today? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. You have it though, right? I, I have it in a closet somewhere. I'm not sure if it fits anymore. It's all right. It's that's a very cool thing that I, it's a little thing that I know about engineers. And I think that a lot of people don't always know what that word means. So hopefully we can um, talk a little bit about what each of you all do and open up that idea of what an engineer can do and maybe ask, uh, what is a favorite part of what you do in your job and in the industry as a whole? Who would really like to answer that question first? I'm just going to look for sparks in the eyes. I think Natalia is thinking hard right there. Natalia, do you have something about really that's exciting about what you get to do? 
Sure, I'll take that one on. Um, you know, electrical engineering sounds very scary and unknown. Uh, it's something that's hard to imagine, but um, once you once you get into learning what it is, it, it's super interesting and exciting. Uh, so I guess uh, the way I could explain my job is uh, when you look around yourself and you see buildings and factories and street lights and things like that, everything needs power. You want power to play your video games at home, right? So that is what we do. Uh, and then distribution particularly as we expand our, our, our system. So any overhead poles or wires that you see, there is more probably underground uh, uh, below us. So I help to maintain uh, those assets that we have to make sure that we can deliver that electricity safely to you um, and also expand the system. So you look around, you see big cranes. So uh, something's probably be being built and uh, I'm probably working behind the scenes to help provide power to their construction sites and to the new big building that they're gonna build. Um, so it's really interesting. It's easy to relate what I do in my everyday life to the things that I see around me. Uh, and, and that's what excites me about being an engineer. So that's a great uh, point. Uh, being able to imagine what you do is that last piece of the puzzle. I'm just gonna jump back to Sarah and say, since you're at the other end of that delivery of, uh, of electricity, um, how do you, what's, what's, tell me a little bit about that excitement and interesting thing. Tell me more. Yeah, what's really exciting to me in a lot of engineering, and especially in what I do, is there's absolutely nothing that's kind of off limit in terms of what you can be learning and what you can be working on. So, for example, at a new facility, a really big decision that needs to be made is what sort of generator we're going to use, how big is it going to be that affects how much power. So that's obviously a very important decision. But then we also get to make important decisions about how the facility will affect the life from day to day of people who are working there. So those are things like, how wide are our hallways? Where do we put our lights? How do we control the lights so that people inside are comfortable? And then we also get to go into things like, how are we going to make sure that the environment around us is as minimally affected as possible and to make sure that all the wildlife is happy with it. So we get to look at things like how does moving water affect the animals who live there? And we obviously don't do that part. The environmentalists do that part, but we get to take that information and learn from it and then use it in our decisions. Part of your research, I suppose. And uh, before making a decision, you got all those pieces of the puzzle in place. Very cool. Uh, Amara, Amira, sorry. Uh, Amira, the, you also work outside and that early stage, that, that resource development uh, part of the piece of the puzzle. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so most of the design work that I do is actually based in um, the office, but um, a lot of times it's beneficial to go to these sites where we're doing the work and um, understand the equipment that we're working on. Um, and you could probably even share some of those pictures um, if you wanted. Great. Um, you work in an office with this kind of equipment, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, not quite. Um, luckily, my office is based in Vancouver here, but um, we did do some site trips to Kamloops. Um, and this piece of equipment shown here is a shovel oh, used yeah, at the mine that. site. Um, and this is the mine itself here. Yeah, is um, that you? Yeah, yeah, that's me. And uh, they're trying to extract copper from this mine. Um, and if you think of copper, it's used almost every day and especially in what Natalia and Sarah work on. I mean, you need it for electricity, definitely. Um, and especially with the transition and climate change, you know, if um, we want to transition to more electric uh, resources and um, assets that use electricity, you definitely need a lot of copper um, for that. So the mining industry has seen that sort of boost and the demand for copper, for sure. And this is just um, another piece of equipment I've decided to show uh, that you get yeah. to work with? Yeah, definitely. And um, this one here is a pump. So we use it to transfer water that ho holds the um, the copper material. And we transport that around the plant um, to be processed. Um, and yeah, the interest in this kind of just sparks with wondering and being curious as to, to how things work. You know, you walk outside and you look at your car and you're like, how does this work? Yeah. And really wanting to learn more about that. And as a mechanical engineer, you work on a lot of equipment 
like this or cars, airplanes, you know, anything that really moves that sort of equipment and you think about it, um, it all really starts with being curious and that's how it kind of sparked with me and I wanted to know more on on how those things work and, and how they're designed and such. Amazing. Um, I'm going to get rid of that and come back to that great point you made is that curiosity uh, of looking all around you. Um, what would you suggest is a, um, a thing that might have sparked your curiosity into getting into this field? And I'll be asking the other two folks as well here on the panel. So uh, get an answer ready. <laughs> um, for me, it, it really did start young, just playing with um, toys like Legos and stuff like that and trying to build things and get it together. Um, and then once you get into school and you start going into science classes, you know, you learn a bit more and it really sparks that curiosity and it, it truly did spark it, you know, within myself. And, and once I got into the high school kind of level and um, you learn about physics and <laughs> that kind of starts to spark even more curiosity. And then eventually that um, drove me into the engineering degree that I pursued just here at UBC and, that sort of drove it all, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna throw to the chat, if there's anyone watching that wants to tell us about something that they are curious about or they're building, or if they have direct questions for our three panelists today, please pop those in the chat and we'll uh, get to those questions as soon as we can. I am curious about Sarah and Natalia's uh, paths and curiosities that got them to where they are today. So I'm gonna go with Sarah this time first. And if Sarah, you can tell me a little bit about what kind of what got you to where you're here, you are here. And maybe if you wanna, pepper in a little bit of uh, ideas about what could uh, be exciting and interesting to say a 12 year old girl that wants to maybe do what you do. Yeah, I really didn't know what engineering was until I was well into high school. So everybody here is way ahead of me. Uh, I was really lucky to participate in a program put on called an by an organization called WISIS where I got to spend the summer between grade 11 and 12 working in an engineering lab at the University of Alberta. Uh, and that was a really great opportunity to see something that I did not at all end up going into, which was material science. Uh, but it was so cool. We were testing a new material to possibly use in hip replacements. Uh, so we were testing like how whether the body would accept it, how long it would stay good. Obviously, it's a very difficult environment to have a piece of metal in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought maybe I might want to be involved in that sort of medical angle. Uh, but then I realized that there are just so many other opportunities everywhere. Everywhere you look is an engineer, really, if you get down to the bottom of it. Uh, and I'm somebody who's really interested by kind of learning all of those weird and unique things. And that really made this kind of broad project role useful for me because now I can't, I can't help when I go outside, I get distracted by looking at things and wondering why they made that decision. Cool. Natalia, do you have something to add uh, that's similar or different to their experiences? Yeah, some elements are similar. Uh, again, I did not know what engineering was other than engineers have to wear hard hats and go to construction sites and look at drawings. Uh, so is that what you thought? Is, that is we that see, still right? true? The engineers sometimes have to go construct. We saw that with Amira. So they, that is still true part of the picture. But you've also both, all three of you described very different elements of the job, right? Yes. Yes, I would agree with that. But there's so much more behind it that you can't even imagine. Uh, so for me, I, I did like science and math in school. Uh, I had a I have an uncle who has been my engineer and role model. Uh, he's been a very prominent scientist, professor, engineer, uh, traveled the world. And that's something that really excited me. I wanted a profession that could be transferable and I could use it when I go to any country. And, and something that could also help people. And I think every engineering profession or technology profession helps people um, and, and you can relate it very easily. And so that was one of the big things that, that sparked that curiosity in me. And my parents encouraged me to go to engineering school and uh, yeah, it all went from there. I was lucky to uh, get an internship at the uh, Saskatchewan Power Corporation at first uh, and go to all the big power plants uh, within the province, which was amazing and learn about electrical equipment and decided to do masters in electrical engineering and it brought me uh, to where i am today i've been planning and designing 
distribution system for, for years now and uh, excited to keep doing it. Um, that's very excellent. Also that you mentioned about your mentors and the three of you inevitably are mentors for uh, people coming into the industry and folks watching today. So um, if there's a, a, something you'd like to leave them with, uh, some fun thing you've gotten to do uh, that might be excite, exciting or enticing into going into engineering, and that could be maybe as simple with Amara as something about getting to be on a mine site or the places you may have traveled to, Natalia, or anything you guys would like to share. Um, please, uh, let's take a moment to, to explore some fun cool things that we might not know that you've gotten to do or that you're excited to get to do on a regular basis. So I'm going to see if uh, Amira has got an answer for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I also kind of wanted to relate it to what Sarah had said with the work um, that you were doing, Sarah, on the hip replacement materials. Um, because although my degree was in mechanical engineering, I actually did a spe specialization in biomedical engineering. Um, and so that kind of looks at more so the medical devices and how you can relate engineering design to those devices. Um, and in my final year, I was working on a project where we were designing um, a sort of surgical device um, used in a very specific surgery on the leg. And during that time, we were working with a surgeon here in Vancouver, and we actually got to go as students working on this project to view the surgery and watch it happen in person. Um, and that was just an incredible experience. I mean, you know, it's it's quite rare that unless you're a doctor or a nurse in those fields where you would get to view a surgery and watch it happen. So, you know, it's it's a great experience and it shows as well that just as an engineer, it's so diverse what you could be doing um, with my degree, if I were to leave the mining industry now, let's say, I could still go back and start working on medical device design or, you know, work in a car, the car industry and designing um, vehicles and such. So it really is diverse and, you know, there's lots of options to go with. Very cool. I'm hearing that uh, even your multiple different kinds of engineers and really that is a very transferable uh, skill set that you've all studied and get to work in. Um, Sarah, if there's one last thing you would like to leave us with, we got to wrap up and send folks on their uh, rest of their journey today. So if there's something, Sarah, you'd like to tell us that's fun and cool in a little short snippet, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that my favorite part is, even as an engineer and perhaps as an expert yourself, it really opens doors to talking to people who are experts in other fields and kind of getting to talk at that level with people who know other things really intimately. So one of my favorite things from day to day is talking to our environment group and just learning all about like the cool fish that exist in the river systems that we use to power the province. Uh, it's really interesting and it's something that they've studied for years and I would never be able to know those interesting things offhand that they tell me, but I get to take advantage of that knowledge. And that's really something great about being an engineer is you get to talk to other people and take advantage of their knowledge and learn some really cool things. Well, hopefully our viewers have uh, managed to pull some of the, your knowledge and uh, take inspiration from that and know that that learning happens throughout their whole careers and your careers and all of our lives so that we can uh, not think of it as too, too big a mountain, starting with small and working our way up and maybe uh, them being part of these kinds of panels in the future. Thank you so much for joining us uh, to both our viewers and our fantastic mentors. Um, uh, if there are any last questions in the chat, you can pop them in and I'll answer them. But I think we have to say goodbye to everyone and send you off on the rest of your adventures today. Thank you so much for your time and sharing. Uh, and please return to the mainstream in our lobby for your next activity to our viewers. Thanks so much, Natalia, Amara, and Sarah. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.